Awesome. Lots of good, friendly people in the room tonight. I love it. Good. Well, welcome everybody. Um, I'm going to just introduce myself quick because I think there's a few um, new faces in the room tonight. So we're, we're delighted that you're here. I'm going to be kind of spinning tonight. We're in the round. So uh, my name is Steph Heatbrink. I'm the director of prayer here at Third Church. Uh, Mike and I get to lead a team of people who put this uh, service together uh, every month on the, the third Sunday. And so we're, we're just delighted uh, to have you here with us. Yes. Um, I missed out on the excitement, it sounds like, of last month, though. Uh, the tornadoes and head into the basement. Um, I was on holiday last month with my family. Uh, so I was in, I got to go to Hawaii, you guys, and it's really easy to worship there. I just have to tell you, every sunset, I was singing the Lord's praises, but for real, it was, it was a really good gift. But uh, we love this community, though, so we're really glad to be back and with you all tonight. Um, so I'm going to kind of set the table for where we've sort of been the past few months. A month at a time feels, yeah, kind of like, we got to go back a ways to sort of recapture everything, and then I'm going to let you kind of know uh, where we're headed for this evening. Um, so like Mike said, at, at the 610, we've been exploring right now um, some themes that we really uh, got from a book called Longing for a Revival. Um, revival is a word that is uh, being used a lot right now. Many of us are longing to see renewal, longing to see uh, revival come. And um, in particular, this book talks about um, renewal and revival is often expressed. We begin to see the fullness of it expressed in word. Uh, proclamation of the gospel, preaching of the scriptures, indeed, uh, which are acts of mercy and justice and compassion, but also in power, right? Uh, people being set free, people being healed, the prophetic, the things that we would consider, you know, gifts of the spirit. And um, we, loved, uh, we love this because in so many ways, uh, if you read the New Testament, one of the ways that uh, the kingdom is described off, often is using a word fullness. You'll see the word fullness. And what we like about word, deed, and power is we, we feel like it starts to bring together the fullness of what God intended when renewal through his kingdom comes. Not just power, not just proclaiming the word, not just uh, acts of mercy and justice, but all of those things come when true renewal uh, poured out by the Holy Spirit begins to happen. And so uh, we're kind of in a couple of months right now where we're talking about deed, this idea of acts of mercy mercy and justice and compassion. And um, I was sad to miss last month, um, Mike did kind of a, a interview session with um, uh, Jenny Hesseltine and Josh Conrad, who are leaders at our local well ministry. And we have some of our other local well ministry leaders with us tonight, the Henrys. And then we also had... Um, uh, Tim Brand with us, who is the director of Many Hands for Haiti. So uh, we got to explore a little bit about deed, what it looks like, um, you know, kind of over the long haul regionally, where you're uh, just loving a community. The well is incredible at that. Um, and then Tim brought us a perspective of what it looks like to partner uh, with the community, with communities of believers in, in Haiti, and just the work that they're doing there, and how deed is being expressed in beautiful. Uh, ways there. Um, but tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to bring Deed kind of closer back to home. And we're going to talk a little bit about just loving people well in our daily lives. And um, I was prompted uh, to kind of go this direction earlier uh, in the month through a couple of things. Um, I was spending some time in kind of study and prayer in May and June, and um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the liturgical church calendar. It's okay if you're not. Um, I only know this much about it, but I know that during that season, we switched from um, Pentecost, the season of Pentecost and the day of Pentecost, into ordinary time. And something just clicked in my spirit when ordinary time shifted, and I just felt like the Holy Spirit said, just pay attention. And I just uh, felt like he said to me, you know, 
most of the kingdom happens in the ordinary moments, in the ordinary acts of obedience, in our ordinary daily lives. And I just felt that strong invitation. Ordinary time is the longest season in the church calendar. We'll be in it now all the way till Advent. And then there's another short season before Lent. But it's true. In so many ways, the kingdom goes forth in our everyday yes and uh, just the gentle promptings of the Holy Spirit that we obey. And um, so we're going to talk a little bit about just ways that we can live that out in loving our neighbors uh, tonight. And then the other thing that prompted is um, I had the honor, and I'm going to invite these guys up in just a second, of going along on a summer mission trip with our middle school students. Uh, I was on the 7th almost eighth grade uh, trip, and wow, we just had an incredible week of partnering with a ministry that really just does this whole loving your neighbor thing really well, too. Uh, One of the verses that they use kind of just to describe their ministry is uh, from John 114 in the message, that the word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. So there's something about us just being bringing the presence and person of Jesus into our everyday lives. That is powerful. And so I thought, we've got some great stories. I know some great neighbors in our community. I know some great students who have been living this out really well. And so we're just going to hear some testimony, share some stories, mostly as an encouragement to us as a community, a challenge, an invitation uh, to just lean into Uh, especially those small acts of kindness, those simple deeds that the Holy Spirit might be acting or asking us uh, to live out over this next month together. So, sound good? Awesome. Well, can I have my first crew up here, Lauren and Abby and Carlin? We'll grab mics for you. You girls can share that one. You got it, Lauren. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's just go through. I I just said your name, so I guess that's a spoiler. But why don't you just quickly introduce yourself, maybe um, who you are, what grade you are in, and yeah, what else? Yeah. Um, My name is Abby, and I'm going into eighth grade. Yeah. She's mine, so. (laughs) My name is Carlin Henry, and I'm going into eighth grade, and I belong to them. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And I'm... Hello, and I'm Lauren Drake, and I have the honor and privilege of getting to serve alongside these women and other middle school and high schoolers that um, attend Mix and Core at church. Yes, yay, we love Lauren. <laughs> all right, so Lauren, we were all on the Abide Omaha mission trip together, and yes. Lauren was our fearless leader, and so I've asked if she would just start off and share a little bit about Um, Who is Abide? What happened this summer? And just give us a little bit of overview of, um, yeah, of how the Abide ministry loves its neighbors. Okay, so Abide is in Omaha, and if any of you have a free Saturday, the second Saturday of the month, or just a free few days, I would highly, highly recommend going and ministering with them. But they are located in North Omaha, and um, the Dultzers, I don't know if you remember Josh, he spoke a few about a year ago, I don't know, sometime, um, a very moving message, spoke about Abide Ministry. So his parents founded it, and they moved into North Omaha, which is the police marked as like a red line community. Lots of um, murders, drug abuse, um, alcohol abuse, not a safe place, um, according to the police. And their mission and vision is to go into North Omaha, which they are doing now. Um, They raised all 12 of their kids in North Omaha. Um, Anyway, and to um, buy rundown homes and everybody in the, or every business in the community donates whatever they need, the refrigerators, the supplies to fix up these lighthouses. And then they train and equip families or um, two people to go live into the house and be a light in the neighborhood. And they open up their doors and their hands to families for anything they may need. Um, Yeah, and just be the hands and feet of Jesus in the neighborhood. And um, there are 736 blocks in North Omaha, and their goal is to get a lighthouse on every single block 
As of right now, they have 46 lighthouses already up and running. And in I think those, it's 62. Oh, 62. Okay, yes. 62 yes. lighthouses up and running. And the cops have seen in those neighborhoods where a lighthouse is, crime has gone down 73%. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, just a beautiful, super incarnational ministry. They're, they're present to just love the community in simple ways from just stocking their refrigerator for kids to come in and grab drinks in the summer um, to throwing block parties and things like that. But they just want to be present and loving. And we'll come back to some things about the lighthouse uh, shortly, but that's one of the key ways that they are neighboring um, in such a beautiful way. And how many kids did, and leaders did we take there this summer, Lauren? Um, this summer, we took all of middle school students, so 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. And of all those groups, we took 100 students and 30 leaders. Yes. So yes. we had 130 students and leaders that got to partner yes. with the ministry this summer. Mm -hmm. And speaking of some awesome students, ladies... <laughs> Do you want to tell us, Abby, maybe you could start off. Tell us a little bit about um, what kinds of things did you guys get to do to just love the neighbors of North Omaha? Um, yeah, so basically on the first day we got there, we baked a bunch of cookies and we wrote some blessings and then we made these little blessing bags. And then throughout the days, we would knock on people's doors, like deliver the blessing bags to them and just ask if we could bless them. Yes, Awesome. So yeah, we just went out and met people. We're really invitational. Um, we got to pray for people. So that was really cool. Carlin, what else did we do? What, it, what were some things your groups did? Um, with our service project groups, we got the chance to go around with a, lawn, uh, with a bunch of lawn equipment and a ask bunch. if they, yes, <laughs> um, and ask if they wanted their lawn mowed, if they had any overgrown weeds or bushes that need trimmed, and we'd just bless them in that way, sparking a flame that would help them bless their fellow neighbors. Yeah, awesome. Thanks. Lauren, and this question's for each of you. Did you have a favorite story of something that happened kind of during our week uh, that we served there? I had a ton of stories, but being the mom, um, <laughs> I was so proud of each and every one of the students. Um, I had the privilege of taking 47 students, so what, half of them went with um, me, which out of 47 students going to be eighth graders, you would assume there'd be a little bit of complaining and I don't want to do it, and not a single one of them complained. Um, they were so ready to do anything and everything that they were asked to do, but um, that's not my favorite part. But it was easy. <laughs> but my but favorite part. But that was part, awesome. Yes, it was very <laughs> awesome. Um, so, like Abby said, we cooked cookies the first night, and I don't even know how many cookies. Way a ton. Eight hundred cookies. So, it three hundred. They planned that to take like it felt four like hours. Eight hundred. Yeah. Yeah. It did. Eight hundred. <laughs> Um, they plan that to take like four hours of our night. And I think our group, besides like baking the cookies, had it done in 30 minutes. So, yeah. <laughs> like I said, they were awesome. But my favorite story would be, so the cookies that night, um, throughout the three days we were there, we delivered them to the neighbors. And the first day, students, and including myself, a little nervous to go rock on, knock on strangers' doors when you hear about the history of North Omaha, and I reminded myself, I'm the adult in this situation, and I need to be ready for anything, but um, at the beginning, the students were very nervous, didn't want to do it. It was like pulling teeth, and I was doing all the talking and praying over them and just having the conversation with the neighbors, but... After like the first or second houses, the kid, the students got a lot more comfortable. And then the next day, I didn't even walk up to the house with them. They're like, nope, we got it. I want to pray this time. I want to talk to them. So they just became very comfortable in the uncomfortable situation they were in just the day before. And they were just beautiful to watch them do that. It was so great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and if I can bring on them as the prayer leader, mm -hmm. these kids were so bold in their uh, willingness to step out and yes. pray over people, pray for blessing. Um, I remember one student just said, yeah, when we asked the person whose door we had knocked on if there was anything specific we could pray for, she just started sobbing uh, because of the situation that she had with her grandson, and they were able to step in and pray over her. And you guys, that takes boldness. Yeah. I'm the prayer leader, and I was was like I'm nervous doing this and these guys were so uh just incredible I loved watching them step out and not only serve but also bring yes. yeah just 
blessing and healing in prayer. So it was really beautiful. And I so. think every student had an opportunity to go to a door. Yep. And a lot of them, it might have not been their favorite part, but I'm sure it was one of the most memorable because everybody yep. had a story and they just sat and listened and prayed over their story. And yep. yeah, just amazing to witness that. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. Abby and Carlin, did you have some a favorite story from your time there? Um, one of my favorite stories is we got to actually help out a lighthouse that lived there. Yep. And basically, we were helping out their neighbor, and actually, their neighbor, their neighbor was the president of an atheist club. Yep. Um, and he had just gotten eye surgery, and we all went over to help clean his yard and stuff. And he was so grateful for us. Yep. Um, just like thirty Christian kids going to clean his lawn. So. <laughs> Come on, right? <laughs> yeah. And yeah, yeah. It yeah. was a really great experience. Yeah. So this lighthouse neighbor that had lived there, they had built relationship and they had a good relationship with this guy, even though, yeah, they were in really different places in their beliefs, but they just kept loving on him. And like Abby said, he was just beaming when we showed up to help. And so they said, we can't talk about Jesus with Mr. Jim today, but we're going to show him how much he's loved by him. So it was really sweet, wasn't it? Yeah. Good. How about you, Carlin? Um, when we were walking around with our bunch of lawn equipment, <laughs> we knocked on a door, and he was sitting in his garage, and he came out and was like, oh, I'm so grateful that you're doing this. It really brightens the neighborhood. So mm -hmm. he introduced himself. His name was Archie, and he had been taking care of his two neighbor's lawns but wasn't able to get around to it because... Well, his neighbors couldn't take care of it because they were older and they weren't physically capable. So um, we fixed up his, his lawn. It needed mowed and needed some trimming. And then we knocked on his neighbor's door and they weren't, ho they weren't home. So Archie told us, oh, you can go ahead and do that. I take care of his lawn anyways. But it, he clearly hadn't done it in a while because he was struggling. So we trimmed up his lawn and... Um, cut down some weeds, fixed some of his bushes, and um, after we finished that house, we moved to a next to another house. And this older gal answered, and she said, um, "I'm sorry, my grandson does my lawn, but I'm so grateful that you've come by here. Let me pray for you." Mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she prayed for these two other girls and my mom in that were in my group, and uh, yeah. Which was awesome, and we, yeah, isn't that so beautiful? There was a, a beautiful give and take in the relationships that we uh, got to have with the people in the community that we got to know. We got to bring some things, but we were super blessed uh, by our conversations, by receiving prayer, too, so it was awesome, and we learned a lot, too, uh, from the people there, so yeah. I'd say, too, what I kind of observed, too, is once we help one neighbor, they, they always had somebody else, hey, can you go mow their lawn? Or, hey, can you go do this mm -hmm. for my neighbor? They were very, like, go worry about them. I'm okay, kind of thing. And so we tried to help. Yeah, it was just, yeah, they just kept passing us along. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it was funny. You know, one of the houses we went to at first, <laughs> we pulled up with our big trailer and all this stuff, and she came out and was like, hey, can you move all that? Because my boyfriend needs to park here. And then, you know, I just struck up a conversation with her and just said, oh, yeah, we're glad to move it, but can we serve you too? And we had a sweet conversation, and she, yeah, single mom. She had an autistic daughter who was inside, and so, again, she was just super grateful that, she didn't have a lawnmower that worked and didn't have money to pay anybody. So, yeah, just simple things. And one of the reasons Abide does this one is to just build relationship. It gives them the opportunity to connect with people. And there's something about just beautification that releases hope. And so um, that is, uh, yeah, part of what we got to do there too. So one final question for you guys. Uh, what would you say that you learned there about loving neighbors that you can bring back here, to your schools, to your neighborhoods, to just to the places that you go on a daily basis? Um, what I learned that I think we could bring back to Pella is just learning to step up and pray, pray for people and bless them. And um, there are multiple times throughout the trip where we got to like circle up over this person and then I, we would just like bless them with different things like I bless you with kindness, I bless you with strength. Yep. And, um, yeah, I think just bringing that back to Pella and having the courage to step up and pray for people is really cool. Yeah. Awesome. 
Um, probably something that I could bring home is no matter how someone looks, what their past is, mm -hmm. um, if they're if they have anything different than I, I can love them and I can love them unconditionally, mm -hmm. even if I don't agree with them. Mm -hmm. I just I can't strike up conversation. Mm -hmm. I need to love them unconditionally, just like Jesus did in the Bible. That's right. Our lighthouse leader showed us that really well, didn't she? She loved her, her neighbor. That was the atheist super well. And I mean, genuinely loved him. Across the street was a Zen Buddhist home um, and retreat center. She was loving on them. So yeah, we learned a lot about unconditional love, even when people are different than us. Awesome. Thanks, Carlin. Okay, so I just have to break down these two girls. This is just two of them. So just imagine a, yeah, a whole room full of them. It was just so beautiful. Um, I would say it's easy, and it looks different for every family, every person, but it's not as scary as what you think, and you just do it. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Awesome. Can we give these guys a round of applause? Thank you. All right. Thanks for sharing, crew. Awesome. So that's our are uh, just a taste, a picture of some of what our students were off uh, doing this summer. We didn't even touch on the high schoolers who were up in Holland and are getting ready to uh, head to Orlando, but I just love learning from our kids. We've got awesome kids here. So good. Can I invite my other neighbor friends to come forward now? We're going to hear um, Bruce and Sue, you come on up too. We'll get you all up here at the same time. I'll give that one to you guys. And this one's on Sue. There you go, ma'am. <laughs> All right. Well, these are a couple of different friends of mine. And when I was praying about tonight and just people who locally have uh, just expressed love, I think, to neighbors in uh uh, a really beautiful way, these two couples came to mind for me, and I invited them to just share a little bit about, uh, yeah, uh, how they've experienced loving their neighbors locally. And so um, why don't we start with you guys, Bruce and Sue? All right. So Bruce and Sue, this is Bruce and Sue Coyle. I'll introduce you. Um, tell us a little bit... Uh, <laughs> In particular, over this past season, how you felt really called to love your neighbors and neighborhood. Um, well, about three or four years ago, four or five years ago, our sunroom was starting to fall away from our house. So this, our house is an 1880 home. So we had this idea that we were going to put a porch on, on our house. And so we thought about it and thought about it and decided we want to make it a community porch. Mm -hmm. And so with prayer and with the help of friends and stuff, we, uh, we designed it and then we went off of that. Yeah. Awesome. So your front porch has very intentionally, you very intentionally built it with the, your eye towards yeah, loving was, your neighbor and community. Yep. That yep. was the purpose of it. Awesome. Well, how have you, um, how have you seen God at work? Uh, through your front porch and just through opportunities to love your neighbors that way. It's been really a blessing for us as everybody has blessed us because Clayton talked about it in the mm -hmm. sanctuary a few weeks ago. And that particular day we were sitting at our dining room table with my brother and his wife and they have been kind of on our hearts for quite a while. We are really working hard on them and the Lord's starting to work on them. So we're glad about that too. But we're sitting there and everyone just starts showing up. Little kids, Older people driving up, parking in the street, which is illegal in front of our place, but that's okay. <laughs> it was good that day. The Lord was gracious. Anyway, um, they were starting dropping off the prayer cards. So we ended up with that, that day about 55 prayer cards. Oh, and, wow. Yeah, and we're sitting in the dining room table, and people are waving at us. And our doctor even showed up. And that was, that was just like, that was amazing. So we prayed over all of those cards, and then on Tuesday, I think it was, Clayton said, oh, by the way, I have a whole bunch more cards that people didn't deliver. They just left in a basket at church. So he brings the basket and sets it on the porch, and there were 550 prayer cards in that basket. Wow. And it was like, oh, wow. And we weren't even stressed about it because we knew that we could pray over those. So we invited a friend of ours to come and sit with us. You guys probably know Randy Sinclair. Yeah. And we've, we've walked with him and he's walked with us and it's been Lauren a great, and, and Lauren and Jean. Yep. Yeah. So those guys came and we sat and prayed over those cards 
And then we took the cards and brought them to the church here and gave them to Clayton for his youth ministry to pray over to. Yeah. So those cards got touched multiple times. So and it was, they were just really sweet things. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't such. It wasn't personal. It wasn't prideful or selfish things. It was praying for people in their family, people that were new to the community. Um, and we just got one the other day from some people that moved in down the street from us. We have no idea who they are, mm. but it was dropped off by their child saying. You know, we hope they find a church, so we're making a visit to that place and oh, find out who they are. Sweet. So, oh yeah, there was a lot of things that little kids drew, and it was just sweet. Sometimes they just wrote one word, and yeah. we knew the Lord meant, we knew what that yeah, word meant, even right. though we didn't. That's it was beautiful. Just great. So, do you guys keep a box on your front porch? How do you collect your cards? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then just kind of spreads by word of mouth that you're the that you'll pray. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we've had 70 people have just come up and sat on the porch with us and just 70, 70. Yeah. Wow. So it's just me. And you know, it's just one at a time or it's a couple that'll come up. And so we had some people that came up and didn't even know what was going on, just yeah. came to visit us. <laughs> and that was a blessing. And too. they got blessed. Absolutely. We all got blessed by it. Yeah. 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 People walk by a lot there and drive by. And so now we have a sign that says, prayer requests and there's a purple box sitting right on the front of our porch where you Love can open it. it up there's cards yep. on the table and yeah so it's just been great so if you wrote a card god bless you thank you because we were very blessed by it and if you didn't please come by and do sometime yeah where do you live if oh. we need to bring some cards over oh yeah yeah <laughs> We live at 304 Franklin. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So I love it. So you've chosen to be out front on your porch, just be present and open to whatever invitations the Lord have might have for you. You don't even have to be there. No. That's right. You can no, collect we cards. Tell people if they want, we you, tell people if they want to come up, sit on the porch. And we're, we're, our plans are to put a uh, small, small library in there with books that we've read and, nice. and stuff like that. And it, this is kind of different, but. I was praying about it, and and I was, what are we going to call the porch? Well, our grandkids call us G-Ma and G-Pa. So I said, well, let's call it G-Pop, God's Porch of Prayer. Oh, I love it. (laughs) Awesome. I think that's a great name. But my sister's an artist, so maybe we'll have her. Commission something for you. Yeah, we never know. Oh, I love it. But God's been really good to us. It's been really, it's been awesome. Good. Yeah. Great. Sue, did you have one more thing you wanted to share? Yeah, just real quick. So if you guys haven't ever heard of the prayer of Jabez, it's amazing. And that's really the prayer that we prayed over the porch, and that's really what got it started. So it's just Jabez, his mom named him that because it means I bore you in pain. Mm. And so it comes from 1 Chronicles 4, 9, and 10. And basically, it's just saying, "Bless, bless me, protect me, keep your hand on me. Don't let me cause any evil to anyone and enlarge my territory. Yeah. And that's the kicker. Because when you play enlarge my territory, people are going to come that you yep. have no idea yeah. are going to show up. And they're going to come around you at one way or another and ask for something or just walk with you or just maybe come. Yeah. And you're going to know it's them. You're going to know why they're there. So I love yeah. it. Beautiful. Thanks, Bruce and Sue. All right. <laughs> Good. And these are my friends, Tyler and Jamie Schifferl. And these guys live right in the heart of town. But Tyler and Jamie have often lived in more kind of rural settings. And so I wanted us to hear, what do we do when neighbors aren't always even in close proximity to us? But what's it look like to love and neighbor well there? So I've asked them to share just a little bit on what loving your neighbors has looked like for you guys as a family. Yeah, that's a good good question. So, yeah, we both grew up uh, in rural areas, not not in Pella. So we are both uh, Im- implants, uh, transplants here to, <laughs> to Pella. Hopefully implants too. Um, You're staying, yeah. We, w- what we have found to be interesting, a couple different things. Jamie and I both had super unique um, living situations, just both as we were single and then as we've gotten married as well. Everything from uh, Jamie and I, when we were both single and before we even knew each other here in Pella, she house sat for a family for multiple months, I 17 think. 17 months. 17 yeah. months. I, I was adopted uh, by a couple here in Pella that I didn't know anybody when I moved here to town. And they were like my Pella parents. I lived with them for a couple of years and was super blessed by them. 
uh, we had a couple here from church. We were renting a house when we first got married, and the, the rental house was going to sell, and so we needed a place to live. And so these friends approached us at church, and they're like, well, we have uh, this cabin you can stay in for a few months while you figure out what to do. And I'm like, oh, that'd be great, and that would bless us. And, and I was 10 weeks pregnant, Yeah, we were, yep, knew. that's right. We were, like, but yeah, we yeah baby number one, live. nobody knew we needed a place. <laughs> so we're worried about all this. So we move in uh, for, for a couple months, and we stayed there for four years. <laughs> <laughs> we were at the cabin. And it was just a suit. We were, we were very, very blessed out there as we looked for a place of our own. And then you fast forward to what, what is five years ago, um, and we bought our own place here north, north of Vermeer, north of, of Third here. And which that's an incredible whole nother night story, but just how we landed with our place, our, our acreage. An acreage close to town in Pella. Some of you know that's. Nothing Not short of a miracle. Yeah. And we love to tell. If you want the long story sometime, look us up. We love to share the <laughs> Stay story. Stay late. Stay late yeah. and chat with them. And mm-hmm. so as Steph talks about, this was our, our background. Our hope was to find a place in the country. So we found that. And this place fit us well. The unique thing about this place is we, we have this 1910 farmhouse. And then separate on a separate building on the place is an apartment building. So for those of us who, who live in the country, what better way to get country life than to have an apartment, like literally on your driveway? <laughs> and so, so this didn't really make sense to us. This isn't what we would have chosen, but we loved the place, and so we bought the place. And what has happened, what has come of that, I think in the last five years, it's been over a half a dozen either people or families have lived in our apartment just in different, unique situations. We've even lived in our apartment <laughs> while we were remodeling our 1910 farmhouse. And the, the first people who lived there, we actually we found out about their need because we prayed for them. And when we were praying with them, they, they were in a situation where they needed some temporary housing. And we're kind of praying, looking at each other like, well, I guess someone could stay in the bunkhouse. And so... They were our first bunkhouse guests. Yeah. So you have had, you've got this space and you've been pretty open-handed with it. Um, yeah. Uh, welcoming like, okay, Lord, who do you have for this space? And you have all kinds of great stories with that space, don't you? Yeah. And I think that's the thing to keep in mind too is uh, whether you have an apartment on your place and can utilize that, but what, what resources has God given us? That's whether right. that's financial resources, whether that's just gifts. Maybe I love baking 300 or 800 cookies depending <laughs> on uh, what day it is. Maybe I love baking cookies and loving on people. Maybe, maybe I, um, we, we love hospitality. We love having people over. So we enjoy that piece of it as well. One thing that I find, so, so for me, um, I need to check my pride when I, when I love on people. Am I, why, why am I doing it? Mm-hmm. Am I doing it because I hope they love me back? Or am I doing it because that is what I'm commanded to do, to love God and love others? And we even, um, when we were, a number of years ago, we had a situation where we had a, a physical neighbor in the country. And we're like, we don't know where these people's, uh, where their faith is at. But we just felt like this was a great chance to love on our neighbors. And, and we felt like we, we felt like we did that well. And it wasn't reciprocated. Like there was, there was uh, between, from them, not from us, there was hard feelings. They, they, they didn't want to be around us. They didn't want to see us. We were trying to love on them well. They didn't even want to be around our kids. I mean, we have sweet, three sweet little kids. We only had two then. I mean, it was, we were, t- we like to think we're easy to get along with. We tried our very best. But I mean, we showed up at their house one day. He opened the crack in the window, saw it was us, closed it and walked away. And, and that was our story with them. So it was good for us as I, as I hear about the, the mission trip and how you guys are knocking on doors of people like that. That was our experience there. We knocked on a door and, and it, got, it got shut in our face and, and we, we tried really hard, but it was really good for us. Like we felt like we loved them well. Mm-hmm. This was not about us as much as I wanted to, for my pride, I wanted it to be about me. Like I want them to love me well, so I feel good about loving them. It wasn't about that. God had asked us to love them and regardless of the outcome, that is what we try to do in faith. And it's stung. I mean, it's stung a little bit. But now, it's like, it's no big deal. You know, if you invite someone over, you try to do something, it doesn't quite go how you thought. You tried. You know, yeah. you tried. And that's a good word for us, because, you know, uh, oftentimes it, we're supposed to be obedient. Uh, uh, God asks us to be faithful. But sometimes, you know, the outcome isn't up to us. You know, and sometimes we end up with really beautiful stories and sometimes we end up with harder stories and, and God does things in us um, in some of those harder moments. But that, that can be a reality too, that um, sometimes we have people close to neighbors that um, are easy to love and get along with and others that um, 
grow our fruits of the spirit. And so, um, and that's so okay too. And so I think that's just good to be reminded. And I'm so glad you guys didn't like back off and say, I'm done. Like we were rejected and I don't wanna, you know, maybe we're not very good at this, but you have just really kept on loving people and continued to invite. So I just, I love that about you guys. So the, the, the flip side about that too is, is we are, I, I say all that, if our, if our motives are, are right, we are, Steph mentioned this earlier, we are blessed by that. God, I think God honors that and blesses that. And as we look at um, what God has brought the world to us in really unique ways, as I think about, we've had a number of missionary families who have just need temporary housing that have stayed mm-hmm. in the apartment. And missionaries, even like during COVID, there was a missionary family from Liberia that needed to come out and find some place to quarantine. Mm-hmm. So what better place at the beginning of COVID? We're like, hey, let's bring people to our place and let them live there. <laughs> and so it was, yeah, unique, but we're able to do that. And I mean, the Lord writes such creative stories. So yeah. we had somebody who was living in the bunkhouse and she was moving out that very day. And so the church called and they said, hey, we have this missionary family. They have two little kids. They had 11 hour notice that they need to leave Liberia. Is there any chance they can stay in the bunkhouse? We don't normally keep it furnished or anything, but our renter said, oh, I'm gonna move in with my mom and dad for a little bit. I'll leave my TV, I'll leave my, all my furniture, yep. all of my, yep. you know, so for 14 days, then we had them and we would meet in the garage at night. We'd all put yeah. our kids to bed. And then, so we're learning all these things about Liberia and all uh, this mission work. I mean. It, it was incredible for yes. us. Missionaries to Costa Rica. We get to learn about their family. Yeah. You know, so we have lots more good stories than, than you know, our one hard story. Uh, one other thing that we do to try to be really intentional, because we are in the country and we don't have neighbors walking by, walking their dogs, or, you know, see them at the end of the lane getting their mail. I mean, we have one neighbor who rides her horse by, and she'll ride that up sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so you we, know you're in Iowa. And... <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> So we've decided we like to host a country neighbor's block party. And so we just go on the beacon and you look and see all up and down. We live on 240th place. Who all lives on 240th place and beyond because we have some other special neighbors too. And we have a shed and we have, we have a couple acres. And so we'll just host a potluck. And we weren't able to do it last year. But we saw some of our elderly neighbors just a week ago, and the very first thing they said to us is, you're having that party this year, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you bet we are. Yes. And so it's just fun to see, you know, some of those neighbors, you just drive by their house if you don't know their story at all. But if you have food and you have a potluck, I mean, people come, and yeah, that's been a really fun way too, the really simple way. Yes. Just to, we're just outside, we're just in a shed. It's not fancy, it's just... Yep. Really simple. Awesome. Beautiful. Can we give these guys a hand? Thank you for sharing about neighboring. All right. You guys can go and have a seat. Worship team, if you guys want to go ahead and uh, come on up and I'll, uh, yeah, kind of bring us to a space of closing. Um, I, I love, especially one of the things that Tyler just said is oftentimes these simple deeds and loving our neighbors is, what do you have? What are you gifted in? You know, from, do you have a front porch and you love to pray? Uh, do you enjoy hospitality? Do you have an empty room? Do you like to water plants? Do you like to mow yards? You know, I think there's all kinds of simple ways that we can, can love our neighbors. And so um, we, I put together, and if you didn't grab one now, you can sure grab one on the way out. Just, this is just a few really simple ideas. And hopefully these conversations were really designed to get you start thinking about is there an intentional way or something that God's inviting me into maybe over this next month? Um, You know, maybe it's that neighbor that you're like, oh, I've been meaning to go introduce myself to them. I'm going to go do that. I'm going to go meet that neighbor. Um, (laughs) Chris Yenner and I have a funny story. We have a new neighbor that we've tried to meet four times in the last 24 hours and we keep striking out, but we're going to meet her at some point here. So sometimes you just got to persevere too. Um, but one of the things I do, I'm going to just move us a minute, uh, into just a time of quiet and listening. And I want us to just ask the Holy Spirit if there's a particular invitation Uh, a particular uh, person that he might be highlighting it. Maybe it's your neighborhood. Maybe it's somebody at work you're supposed to take out for lunch or something. But we're just going to ask him, God, is there a tangible act, a simple deed that you would have uh, an invitation for me? Um, And I'd love for us to do some things between now and the next 610, and then I'd love to hear some stories at our August gathering. So let's just go ahead and pray a minute and listen to the Lord. 
So, Father, we just uh, we thank you for these stories, and I'm just encouraged by uh, these simple ways they, that um, these friends have uh, shown us that the kingdom can come uh, as we love the people that you put in our everyday paths. And um, God, our world really needs kindness. It really needs uh, face-to-face connection. It needs encouragement. It needs good news. It needs healing. And so we just pause for a moment now and just ask, God, do you have an invitation for us over this next season? Is there a person? Is there a particular way you're asking us to love? We just pause for a moment and listen. And then can we just take a symbolic posture? Could we just open our hands on our laps a minute? And could we just give God our yes? So Lord, we we just want to give you our our yes tonight. Um, We we give you permission to interrupt us. We we just give you our calendars. Uh, We give you our appointments. Uh, We give you our resources, Lord. And we just say, God, we, we want to use what we've been given, time, talents, treasures, to just love our neighbors well. And so as a group tonight, God, we just give you a yes. And we pray for so many divine appointments, simple deeds, simple acts of love to come forth from this community over this next season. So we just love you and and we thank you, God, for that you invite us to love people and for the ways that we experience you in that. So we just pray this together tonight. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. I invite you to stand as we worship with one final song.